Wow, well, here we are. You're getting really close to the end. We've just got a few more weeks. I'm going to try to cram in a whole bunch of cool facts and lessons and activities about the animals that we have left to work with. Um, as we're doing that, looking at vertebrates, animals that as a group we're probably more familiar with, I uh, just want to remind you that uh, when this year began, our main focus of life science was to, um, to really see in God's creation how he reveals himself through the things that he's made. And I just really hope that you guys have enjoyed what we were doing when we were together, as well as what we have been doing apart. And that this has been not just something where you've learned a lot and um, experienced a lot, but you just really thoroughly enjoyed it too. Uh, just the whole process of learning and seeing God's hand at work in this world, in both the uh, difficult as well as the uh, the fun and exciting and enjoying joyful times. Um, so as we look at these animals, look at just pay, continue to pay attention to the intricacies of all these little creatures and um, how we are all just amazingly created by a, a wonderful God. So I think as most of you guys know, fishing uh, in my family's life has always been kind of a big deal. So here's a picture of a couple of fish and a couple of persons. You might sort of recognize that guy. That's my younger son, Shane, who's now 29. Looks like he's about your, in fact, he is. That was the, his sixth grade summer. We went down to Mexico. And one of the days we were out, we caught several, what they call Dorado down there. You might know it as Mahi Mahi in the restaurant. And you might recognize them uh, from Contiki. Those were the fish that uh, spent a lot of time under the raft while they were drifting across the, the Pacific. Um, these are a couple of males. You can tell they have that kind of squarish head, so they call them bull dorados. Dorado in Espanol is uh, gold, and they have this gold color. But they also, when they're fresh and alive and being caught and upset and angry, they are, their skin actually goes through a variety of color changes from a lime green to a gold to um, a dark, dark blue. So a uh, very cool animal. And uh, one of the rules at our house is if you're going to catch something like that, you're also going to, if you keep it, if you kill it, you eat it. That's been the rule since uh, since my boys were little. So this is actually not Dorado or Mahi Mahi, but Yellowtail, another common California fish. Uh, some sashimi in my kitchen there. So, uh, and just want you to know that tradition is continuing with my grandchild. So at this point, he's kind of uh, stuck in a... Um, in a stroller there while I'm getting to do all the fishing, but that was about a year and a half ago, and he's actually able to, at this point, catch some of his own fish. So there he is a little bit later, that's about a month or so ago. Uh, his family, uh, my older son, Nolan, their street has both a freshwater pond as well as access to saltwater. So with all this quarantine, they still pretty much fish every day. So he's got a pretty good little deal. He has no idea what's going on in the world other than let's go fishing. So, speaking of fish, let's get into our lesson. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what are called bony fish. And just the fact that they're called that would infer that there is another group that are non-bony. Um, probably the better word to describe that, though, is there are fish that are called cartilaginous. So, um, in a quick comparison, and given the time, it would be awesome to do a, a great comparison of the bony fish and the cartilaginous fish. But just real quick, the cartilaginous fish, another lesson for another time, uh, is the shark group. Sharks and rays and another animal known as skates, uh, which is kind of a ray-like fish, uh, more common on the east coast. So we're going to be mostly learning about the uh, what are called the bony fish, where they have a skeleton made of literally bone. Uh, they are both vertebrates, however. Even though the cartilaginous fish, their skeletons are not made of bone. Uh, they still fall under the category of being a vertebrate animals with a backbone. Um, so um, there's two kinds of cartilage, or sorry, excuse me, bony fish. There are what are called the lobe finned fish. If you were to look at the skeleton, they have very, very thick bones. An example, I got two examples. One's a lungfish. They have these very kind of, um, we call them fleshy or meaty kind of uh, fins, as well as this guy called a coelacanth which was thought to be extinct, but has actually been discovered in large numbers since deep sea exploration has advanced so much over the years. So those are the um, lobe fin fish. Your most common fish, though, the fish that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, are what are called ray fin fish. And what that means is, and we'll see lots of pictures here in a bit, but the fins, um, it's almost like as if you were building a kite and you had this framework 
of little sticks or whatever that you spread um, a thin sheet of paper over to make a kite. And in the case of a ray finned fish, these tiny little bony spines are covered with just one thin layer of skin. So if you have a fish in your aquarium or if you just need to rely on the pictures I'm about to show you, you can typically see these little bones through the skin of the fish. So the skin that covers that is very, very thin. And those are what you call ray finned fish. So everything we see here now is going to be what's called a ray finned fish. So we've got some nice little tropical reef um, scene here. And you can kind of see if you look closely or if you uh, just Google image any, old, any fish on your own, you can typically see, you can really see on the tail of this guy, you see all those little thin lines. And you're seeing right through the skin and seeing those, uh, those what they call rays, the thin bones that make up, uh, in case that, what's called his caudal fin, his tail fin. So speaking of tail fins, also known as the caudal fin, you can uh, determine pretty much by looking at the tail of a fish what his lifestyle is like. So um, a fish that has a roundish or a kind of a squarish tail, these are fish that are not necessarily open water fast swimmers. Uh, that would include this pointed one. Uh, they tend to be more like darting type fish, meaning they might hide behind a rock, dart out real quick, grab something to eat, dart right back in. Your open water fish uh, tend to have more forked or lunate fins, tail fins, caudal fins. Uh, if you can think of the marlin in the classrooms, shaped a little bit more like this, uh, really designed for more efficiency, long distance, fast uh, swimming. So what you call pelagic or open water fish tend to have these shapes. And then a little something in between would be like indented, um, which we'll see some fish in a, in a second that we'll see that uh, kind of your in between guys. So this one's kind of hard to uh, actually tell the tail fin, but I'm actually using this to point something else out. Fish, like sharks, but they both groups have what's called this lateral line. And what it is, it's they're like tiny little punctures in the skin and through the uh, scales of a fish that um, connect to a nerve, which runs to his nerve cord, which runs to his brain, and it senses even the slightest little changes in water pressure. So if you ever see like schools of fish all just moving together, and you think of a bunch of dancers on stage doing choreography um, and moving together with practice and practice and practice. Well, fish don't practice that, and they don't even really need to see each other. They can literally feel each other. For So for those of you that are dancers or move in any kind of coordinated manner with a team of some sort, if you can imagine just being able to do everything you do by just feeling the person next to you with the air in between, not literally touching, uh, how easy or more efficient it would be to move together and fish use this lateral line system to do that. It's also why it's so hard to sneak up on a fish and try to grab when they feel you coming. Essentially gills, uh, their breed, think of gills as being a fish's lungs. Um, main job of a gill is to extract oxygen out of what the fish breathes, but the fish does not breathe air, he fishes water. <laughs> Excuse me, he breathes water. So as the water flow goes through the fish's mouth, and passes by the gills, what it's doing is it's extracting, you look through this picture here, is it's extracting hopefully oxygen, so hopefully for the fish's sake, and we're gonna do a little activity that um, is gonna demonstrate how active fish can be determined, is determined by the amount of oxygen in the water, just like it would be for us, oxygen in the air. Uh, so as they breathe this water and it goes through their lungs, uh, their gills, the job of the gills is to extract that oxygen from the water so if you were to do, like kind of like us, uh, if I was to take a sample of this air right here, hopefully there's about 21% oxygen in there, I'm going to inhale it and then exhale it, hopefully that number, that quantity of oxygen and what I exhale is now smaller because my body took it in and hopefully you remember it, what I'm breathing out, I'm going to have a lot more CO2, carbon dioxide. So in a similar way with a fish is high oxygen concentration going in through the gills and coming out, hopefully, if everything's working right and uh, his gill system is working properly, uh, is deoxygenated water, water that's typically higher in CO2. So, and then like us, if you guys remember back learning about protists, we've got phytoplankton in the water, taking that CO2 that fish have exhaled and uh, turning that back into CO, uh, oxygen by doing photosynthesis. Uh, one thing that's different about how fish breathe and how we breathe is notice the flow of water is only in one direction. Whereas when we inhale, 
then we exhale. For fish, it actually uh, just goes in one direction. You know, and that actually affects the type of heart that they have. But again, another story for another day. There's about 3,000 types of different bony fish. That's so a fairly large group. Um, lots of different categories. Okay. Uh, some examples just for us, <clears throat> since we're just get, kind of getting an overview here. Uh, we've got the tuna and rockfish, um, which is a common, common fish for, uh, for us to eat. Um, great picture of being able to see those rays. If we talk back about the fins, and in fact, this will have something to do with the activity. You can come back to this uh, when it's activity time here for the lesson. But you can see all the little rays, the little bones inside the fish. You can see his lateral line, little door that covers the gills. It's called an operculum. So when he's breathing, water goes in and it would come out the backside of that door. So that pumping you might see <laughs> of a goldfish or if you have a fish in your, any other kind of fish in an aquarium, is he's pumping water in the mouth and then out the gills. Okay. Uh, and then the different kinds of flatfish like halibut and sole and um, people use the term uh, flounder sometimes different parts of the country we've got bass uh, trout or salmon okay very common for you guys who have gone up into the mountains fishing and uh, billfish okay so like the marlin in the classroom so here's what I'm gonna ask you guys to do uh, if you have something around the house this was that slide was actually made to be used in the classroom uh, it says using connects which the, the, the building devices that we have in the classroom um, and your device, meaning a phone, because you're going to take a picture when you're done. Um, you can use anything you want. I'm going to show you on the video here in a little bit after you're looking at this, something I made using just nails. I didn't have anything else around my house here. So I went to the garage and found some nails. You can find toothpicks, which actually was my first thought of what to do around the house or anything like that. And what I should do is create a realistic model of a fish skeleton. So <clears throat> something like this, and again, I'll show you on the video what I did, just a quick throw together thing. So I'm hoping for a little more detail. And then what you're gonna wanna do is look up the different areas of the parts of the body, okay? So dorsal fins, oftentimes bony fish, as well as cartilaginous fish, the shark group, have uh, two sets of dorsal fins, caudal fin, anal fin, pectoral fins, pelvic fins, so on. So what I'd like you to do, uh, is, uh, and I'll explain again on the video, is build a little model of a fish skeleton and label the parts of it um, and then send that in. Okay? So uh, I'll be here and we'll talk to you soon on Zoom and have a great uh, time building your little fish skeleton. All right.